everyone. Welcome to Storytime with Grandma Yvonne. Today I'm going to read you a story that I actually wrote with my friend Elaine Brewer. And I've dedicated this story to my mom because she put up with a lot from me. And so we are going to have a story about Amanda and Cassandra and Stanley who are moving to a new place. However, it's not going so great at their house. I won't go, shouted Amanda angrily. She ran from the living room up the stairs into her bedroom and slammed the door behind her. Amanda looked around the room. She and her mother had planned to redecorate it when they could afford it. She threw herself across the bed and sobbed into the fur of her favorite teddy bear. Why? Why did Dad have to take that new job? Across the country, he had said. Why couldn't he just stay here? Amanda had difficulty making new friends. Now she would have had to leave her best friend, Susan, and move to a new place that she didn't know anyone. At that moment, Amanda hated her mom. She hated her dad. She even hated God for letting this happen to her. As Amanda lay face down on her bed, she heard the door open softly. Her mom came in, sat down, and gently placed her hand on Amanda's back. Amanda remained very still, hoping her mom would think she was asleep. Amanda, her mom said compassionately, I know this is very hard for you, honey, but your father has been waiting for an opportunity like this for a long time. And it means I don't have to work anymore. And I will be here for you when you come home from school. We have a house picked out right across from the park. And you will have your own room with a window seat just like you've always wanted. You can look out the window and see your friends playing in the park. And they will be able to come over to your house anytime you want them to. Friends, Amanda thought bitterly. I'll never have a friend like Susan ever again. She wished her mom would just go away and leave her alone. She remained very still and refused to talk. Okay, Amanda, her mother said with a heavy sigh. I'll leave you alone for now. I'm very sorry that you are so sad, but please remember that your dad isn't taking this job to hurt you. We love you, honey, she said quietly as she turned to walk out the door. Amanda wanted to turn over and look at her mom because it sounded like her mom was crying too. Could it be that mom was feeling sad about leaving all her friends at the church and the friends that she'd made at work? Amanda was feeling too sorry for herself to care about her mom's feelings. She didn't move until her bedroom door closed and then she wept and wept bitterly until she fell asleep. Amanda woke up to the smell of coffee. Mmm, she loved that smell. It meant Mom and Dad were up. Her family always had breakfast together before Dad went to work. Amanda loved those times and looked forward to them every day. All of a sudden, she remembered. They were moving. Amanda didn't even want to see her family this morning. She was feeling angry, but she did have to get up and get ready for school. Amanda had started to get out of bed when she realized she was still in her clothes from yesterday. Someone had come into the room and covered her with a blanket in the last night. Must have been Mom. Amanda did love her mom very much. However, she still refused to care about anyone but herself. She put on some clean clothes, brushed her teeth, and combed her hair. Amanda's eyes were swollen from crying so much. She tried to scrub her face so it would look normal again, but it didn't work. Maybe if they see how unhappy I am, Dad will change his mind and stay here after all, Amanda mumbled. Her steps were sluggish as she started down the stairs to the kitchen. As Amanda got closer, she could hear her brother and sister, Stanley and Cassandra, asking all about the new house the neighborhood and the park across the street. Dad was laughing and telling them to slow down because he could only answer one question at a time. How could they be so happy and laughing so much? Didn't they know how depressed she was? Amanda hesitated in the doorway of the kitchen. 
As soon as her family noticed her, they stopped laughing and talking. Amanda felt unhappy for a moment, knowing that her attitude was making everyone else sad. Amanda longed to ask Dad those same questions that Stanley and Cassandra are asking, but her anger stopped her. Breakfast that morning was not a happy time. It usually was. Dad prayed that God would be with them all through the day, and then he prayed that Amanda would be able to find new friends and that she would be happy again. As Amanda sat there, she realized that she really did want her happiness back, but she was too stubborn to let go of her anger. Going to school that morning was pure agony. She would have to tell her best friend Susan that she was going to move. This meant Amanda would have to say goodbye to her teachers, her friends, and leave the school that she loved so much. She arrived at school just the same time as Susan. Susan waved to her and smiled at Amanda and came running towards her. Hi, Amanda, it's good to see you. Just wait till I show you what my mom put in my lunch today. Amanda didn't even hear Susan because she had started to cry. Susan stopped talking and looked at her. Amanda was so usually so happy in the mornings and Susan thought something very sad had happened. Amanda, what's wrong? Susan asked. Amanda told Susan that her family was moving in two weeks. She shared with her friend how angry she was at everyone and that she didn't want new friends or a new school or a new house. Susan couldn't believe her best friend was moving away so soon. They threw their arms around each other and stood there crying until the morning bell rang. Amanda and Susan slowly started to make their way across the schoolyard to the classroom. The next two weeks were very busy for Amanda and her friend or and her family. They sorted and packed and hauled things through the dump and had a garage sale. Stanley and Cassandra could hardly wait for the moving van to come, and this only added to Amanda's anger. She didn't join in the fun and went around with a frown on her face every day. Her family was concerned about her and tried to cheer her up. However, Amanda's anger pushed everyone away. They continued to pray that God would help her accept the move. The night before the moving van arrived, Amanda stayed at Susan's house. It wasn't usu the usual time of giggling and eating popcorn and listening to music. They were both very sad and wondered if they would ever see each other again. The next day, they packed the car and started their long journey across the country. It was the longest three days of Amanda's life. Mom and Dad and Stanley and Cassandra were talking excitedly as they finally drove down the street to their new house. It was a big white house with a beautiful picket fence. That's where the window seats are, children. Mom pointed to the upstairs windows that stuck out from the house. Dad motioned the other way. And sure enough, there was a large playground. It had the latest equipment, a ball diamond, and even a wading pool. Dad brought the car to a stop in front of the house. Stanley and Cassandra jumped out and ran over to the playground, giggling the whole way. Amanda stood watching them go, and a tear trickled down her cheek. That's all for today. I hope you come back next week and see what the next part of the story is.